Heroes of the Helen Blake is getting its second performance in Dublin on the 1st of May in the National Concert Hall. And like all things we create, like this wonderful piece, you go or one goes on a journey. Would you mind telling us about that journey? Yeah, it actually began with a lovely invitation from Wexford Symphonia, who were celebrating their 20th year as an orchestra here in Wexford. And they commissioned me to write a brand new piece for them to perform, which is a lovely opportunity. And so in the pursuit of looking for something, some material to write about, Keith Miller, who's the secretary of the orchestra and also an RNLI volunteer himself, introduced a story, a true story, of a schooner ship, a Norwegian schooner that hit the rocks off of the town of Feathered, which is along the coast here in Wexford, and how the lifeboatmen of Feathered braved their way through the storm. And you have to remember, this isn't the, the days of the, the wonderful technology that we have now. This is open boats and oars. And it took ages to row out to these rocks. And when the boat called the Helen Blake hit the rocks itself, nine of the crew perished straight away. So then with the remaining lifeboatmen from the Helen Blake and the crew of the Mexico now stranded on these rocks, there followed a three-day rescue with volunteers coming from around the county, from Kilmore Quay, which is just down the road here, and also from Wexford Town itself and from Ross Lair, sending boats out, hauling themselves around the coast to get to the rocks off the coast of Feathered to try and rescue these poor souls. Um, and it seemed like a really good subject matter to write a piece about. So in a sense, creating something about real people or an event in history brings a certain special connectivity. Yes, yeah, so and it wasn't actually until I started working with the orchestra and with the singers that um, it began to dawn on me how important this story was and the connectivity thereafter. As we were gathering the choir, so many of the, the chaps were telling me about their grandfathers who were involved in the rescue. They may have come from Rosslare or they may have come from Kilmore. And that was stunning and people were coming forward and saying this is, this is really important to them. If you're someone that comes from Feathered, the whole story still has a, a, a darkness about it because it affected, you know, it lost nine of their young men who were lost in one rescue mission. And yet when you talk to the people from Ross Lair, they have a very different emotion about it. It was, it was a success, it was a, a great rescue mission and, and uh, it has a completely different weight about it. But yeah, across the county, it had different colours of emotion that still exist and resonate today. <laughs> In terms of the piece that will translate to people in a different way because they're coming from a different background or having a different emotion attached to it uh, they will hear it in a very different way and perhaps it might mean something different that's the interesting thing though isn't it that a piece of art or a piece of music will mean something completely different to two different people and um, what i'm interested in knowing is what this piece means to you it's about how amazing we are as human beings and possibly our experiences hint at what we're made for. For example, whether we go next door and see how our neighbour is and look in after them, or whether we actually get in a boat and, and go and rescue somebody who's in trouble at sea, our bodies are then pumped with endorphins that actually make us feel amazing. You know how you feel after you've done something amazing, particularly with people. And that surely to me is nature's big hint in part, we are actually made to help each other. And we are amazing because of that. Um, and I think that fundamentally is, is what this piece is about.
So this piece is written for a large orchestra and a large male voice choir in the last movement. And I was wondering what the significance of that choir is. So to get the construct of the piece, unusually I started by writing a poem. And it became a, a five-verse poem, and Heroes of the Humble Lake, five movements. And each of the movements and the verses from the poem express a different emotion. The grandeur of the sea and the, the ships that sail upon her, the faith and hope of those that go to sea and those that wait at home, the emptiness and loss, the violence of the storm, and it seems very poignant to wrap it all up with a song of hope, like a hymn of hope, in which I could use the text from the poem that the men would sing. And it was men really because I suppose in those days the volunteers that went to sea were men, those that were lost in feathers were men. I also looked for local material. There's a, a wonderful Wexford sea shanty called the Coast of Malabar and, and Whiskey Johnny is another Wexford sea shanty. It's great to have local material. <laughs> Also, I wanted to reflect the great faith of those who went to sea and those that stayed at home. And that great hymn tune, Hail Queen of Heaven, the Ocean Star, if you listen all the way through each of the movements, you'll hear snippets in various guises of those tunes and those melodies. way to, to again bring in material that, that means something to people. And there's a battery of unusual percussion instruments. A very good friend of mine, Nick Bailey, who's a well-known percussionist, uh, came over to a shipbuilder's yard with me that we have here in Kilmore Quay. And we've got the idea of if somehow we could find bits of metal, bits of ship that would clash together in the performance to in some way echo the iron and steel of those magnificent 19th century ships. And it became a feature and we found uh, an old ship's propeller which we hung up on a, on, a, on a rig and it really has an impact, a beautiful impact. journey still continues into the rehearsal and ultimately into the performance and hopefully onto the next performance and the composition process also includes working with performers working with wonderful people who are enthusiastic and play your music like perhaps you hadn't heard and bring something to the composition <laughs> to acknowledge that as a composer, that, that in front of you with all these people is a wealth of experience which they bring and they alter and change your perception of how the piece should come. And, and Wexford Symphonia are no exception to that. They're wonderful, they are enthusiastic and it's just going to be a pleasure to work with them again uh, to play Heroes of the Helen Blake.